academic coursework to prepare you for healthcare administration is uh, we also, as you're getting close to completing your studies in the major, and they'll be talking about this more in a few minutes, uh, you have the opportunity, you'll be doing an internship. So we actually move you from the academic setting to the community setting where you're actually beginning to develop relationships in a health care industry. And that not only can be so beneficial for you in the start of your career, that's where you actually begin to connect with people, develop relationships that can also lead to job opportunities. So uh, that's an exciting part. I know they'll talk more about internships and the specifics of those. Um, as you can see uh, on the slide, the employment opportunities uh, there for you, uh, clinic manager, pharmaceutical sales rep, a hospital administrator, community service coordinator, healthcare informatics, uh, you know, all of those are uh, opportunities that are available to you once you graduate with your degree. And, and many will go on to pursue uh, graduate opportunities here at the, at the university also. So um, that's it for healthcare leadership. And uh, any questions that I'm able to answer at any time, let me know. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Uh, we have exercise, sport, and movement sciences. That's me. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Alex Carnell. I'm here as an instructor representing uh, the exercise, sport, and movement science arm of our college. And as you can see sort of in front of you, um, there are a lot of great opportunities coming out of our undergraduate degree program. Um, one of the things that Jessica brought up earlier that I think is, is worth restating um, is just the amazing amount of, of diversity and fields and opportunities that comes with uh, undergraduate training in this space. So we have everything ranging from uh, students who intend to pursue careers in things like physical or occupational therapy, uh, other medical professions potentially, uh, or even advanced study in uh, exercise, sport, and movement science, in which we also offer uh, a master's degree, a program of which myself I'm a proud grad of. Uh, we do quite a bit of study in space, including things like uh, anatomic, uh, sorry, excuse me, um, exercise physiology, mechanical aspects of movement, a little bit of nutrition uh, that sets students up for a good career in things like uh, strength and conditioning, personal training, potentially going to a professional school in, in the case of uh, rehabilitative therapeutic fields. Um, they could pursue things in sports medicine. There are really so many different um, opportunities that would be available to you with an undergraduate degree in this area. Um, as far as the graduate program, uh, we really do have some incredible faculty members. I, I think I'll be back in a little bit um, to talk some more about research. But then as Greg talked about as well, the internship. Uh, really, really valuable experience for undergraduate students completing their last year uh, of their bachelor's program. And we've had a lot of success placing students in local area hospitals, uh, schools, gyms, uh, rehabilitation centers, um, really all sorts of things. And so I'm going to try to to keep it somewhat brief here. Uh, I know we've got a couple of other programs to go over and I'd be happy to hang around towards the end uh, in the event anybody has any extra questions. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. And now we have dietetics. Hi, everyone. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your evening to join us tonight. Uh, my name is Mary Catherine Schellert. I am a registered dietitian nutritionist and a clinical associate professor in the dietetics department. Um, we love our program and uh, are really excited to share a little bit about what we offer to potential students this evening. The majority of our students um, do have a desire to become a registered dietitian nutritionist, but there are other opportunities um, in the career field for people with an undergraduate degree in nutrition and dietetics. Some students end up going on to become food technologists or food scientists. Uh, you see people working in the nonprofit realm with food insecurity and sustainability. We have individuals who uh, work for the extension service or who may work as health coaches in, 
in area um, facilities. So there are opportunities um, and also in, in food service manage, management. But like I said, the majority of our students do go on to become a registered dietitian nutritionist and we are an ASCEND accredited didactic program in dietetics. And what does that mean? Well, it means that we are accredited by the only um, accrediting body for nutrition and dietetic programs within the states. Um, it is a very rigorous mark that you have to uh, meet in order to maintain accreditation through that program. Sometimes people ask about program rankings and they want to know where our program ranks against other programs, um, similar programs at other universities. And there are no rankings for this particular field. And the reason is because we are all accredited through that, uh, through Ascend. Um, everyone has to meet the same standards and um, competencies regardless of if you are affiliated with Mayo Clinic or the University of Memphis. So you can feel um, assured that you are getting an excellent education uh, through our program here. We have some fantastic faculty. Um, many of them are also registered dietitian nutritionists who bring practical experience in the clinical realm to their teaching. Um, and that's something that our students always comment on as, as being really uh, meaningful and helpful to them. Um, at graduation, when you finish with your undergraduate degree in dietetics, I mentioned several of the things that you can go on to do immediately. Uh, one thing I failed to mention is that you are um, immediately qualified to sit for the nutrition um, or dietetic technician registered board examination, which is a national board exam, to work as a diet tech. And diet techs can be found in many different types of facilities, whether it's long-term care, clinical, more like a hospital facility, um, or in the community setting as well. Like I said, uh, many of, most of our students do go on to become registered dietitian nutritionists, and there is a post-bachelor's um, or post-graduation requirement of a supervised practice experience um, that's necessary in order to take that step to become an RD. Our program sets you up well for that and walks you through the application process. We are um, really proud of the fact that for the past several years, 100% of our students who were um, well-qualified applicants who applied for dietetic internship programs matched. Um, we're really proud of that because nationally, there's only about a 60% match rate. So we feel um, we're, we're just really, we're happy. We have a high quality of student. Uh, we have a great student to faculty ratio. We really get to know our students well and are very invested in in their success. And so I think that you could ask any of our students and, and they, would, they would echo that sentiment. At the University of Memphis, there are several graduate school opportunities within, within this field. One is the Master's of Science program in clinical nutrition, which takes that um, MS in clinical nutrition and combines it with the required supervised practice experience in order to become a registered dietitian nutritionist. This is a really special program because it um, takes that 1200 required hours of, of hands-on experience to become an RD, meshes it with uh, the requirements to get your master's degree and it's condensed into a 16 month program. So as far as bang for your buck, it's really a fantastic opportunity. For students who have a desire to, to really dig deep into nutrition science, we have a master's program in nutrition science where you really have an opportunity to work with some fantastic researchers um, and, and really get dig down deep into um, a particular area of focus that you might be interested in. We also have a fully online master's program in environmental nutrition. This is a really interesting program because there are people from a lot of different backgrounds uh, who are in this program. You have people from the nonprofit sector, people who are working on sustainability initiatives, people who are registered dietitians, people who, uh, I think there's someone in the program right now who owns a vineyard in Napa Valley somewhere. So you just really, you, you get to learn from not only wonderful faculty, but also from the life and lived experience of the other students in the program. And then we also have a graduate certificate in sport nutrition and dietary supplementation program. Um, and again, one other thing I'd like to add is that we recently started a sports nutrition program or a sports, we have a, a sports diet, a dietitian who works with Tigers Athletics and 
we have many students who have the opportunity to work along with him with some elite athletes and they work out of the human performance center which alex alluded to maybe just a little bit um, and that's a really unique opportunity that our students have to kind of get into the sports nutrition side of things which is a really a, an area that a lot of people are really interested in so lots of great stuff going on in our program and would love to answer any questions that you might have about it Thank you, Mary Catherine. All right, physical education, teacher education. Me. Hey, I'm Becky Boats, um, and I'm one of the instructors in the PEAT program. I always say, if you want to have the best job in the world, you should become a PE teacher. You get to exercise while having fun. You get to build relationships with students. Um, you get to know most of the students that are in the school. So. You become, I tell my students, like the rock star of the school. Um, so it's just kind of exciting and fun. You walk in the lunchroom and everybody's like, oh, there's a PE teacher, but it is so much fun. I just cannot say enough about uh, being a PE teacher. And our program is also fun, it reflects that. We try to build relationships or we do build relationships with our students. Um, that is very important when you become a teacher. Um, so, you know, we really try to get to know our students on a different level so that we can help y'all along the way. Um, if there's issues going on, you know, we're understanding things that you're going through. Um, you also get to teach students how to be physically active for a lifetime. So you're not just focusing on the sports, but you're also focusing on skills that they can use and teaching them lifetime, um, lifetime activities. You can teach them different um, you know, you can do aerobics or you can do uh, focus on some sports. You can focus on doing some other activities that just aren't the sports because some kids don't like that. So um, anyways, we also have a program that is that we just started, which is the coaching, the sport coaching program. Um, and this will help you become, um, help you develop your skills to become a effective coach. Uh, a lot of times, it, a lot of things in the PE program and sport coaching overlap because you do have to build relationships with your athletes um, and get to know them. And we also work on teaching them like how to have co cooperation skills, how to have respect. We work on mental skills, um, trying to understand why some, some athletes get in slumps, why do some athletes have issues performing, um, just understanding that intris intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Um, so these are just exciting programs and they're fun. Uh, there's a lot of um, activity involved. So it's not just all lecture. So we just, we do have a lot of fun in our program. So I think you should consider coming into our PEAT program and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you, Becky. All right, medical assisting, which is one of our minors. <laughs> So I'll talk briefly about that. We actually have two minors. Uh, one is, as you can see here, in medical assisting. And some may wonder, well, what exactly is a medical assistant? Well, in this day and age, typically you go to a, a physician's office, whereas in years past, you may have been met by a nurse or, or some sort of assistant. At this point, most of those offices are staffed by medical assistants, and those individuals generally have anywhere from about one to two years potentially of training. And what we've done uh, about a year and a half ago is we started and built a medical assisting minor. And what this program does is essentially it trains the students and gives them all the content as well as the hands-on skills necessary to function in a role as a medical assistant in an outpatient doctor's office, physician's office. That's generally where most of these individuals would be employed. And we did this for a couple of reasons. One, a lot of our students, while they're in college, are also working. So we're thinking this would be a good opportunity to train them, allow them to take the certification exam and then go to work and be employed in a field of study that has relevance to what they plan to do in the future. And two, as I mentioned previously, a lot of our students are going to go to graduate school at some point. And some of those graduate programs require a certain number of patient contact hours prior to starting that graduate program. Physician's assistant is one example. 
individuals are required to have um, literally hundreds of contact hours with patients before they can start those programs. And this particular minor allows individuals to, who are already likely in our program of study, we allow other students to come in as well, but mostly students who are already in our college, who are in one of our majors, health science, exercise science, et cetera, they plan to enter into this minor. You can see down below, it says a 24 credit hour minor. Understand that a good number of those hours the students are already taking as part of their program of study. And then they tack on a handful of additional courses to train them specifically for this particular work. And then they could actually go to work, again, earn some additional income. But for a lot of students, it's really the fact that they're going to work and they're seeing patients on a regular basis. So they're gaining that experience and really the understanding of, do I really want to be working one-on-one -on -one or potentially in a group setting with patients as part of my career? So that's a minor that we have that has become very popular over the past about a year and a half or so. And then our second minor is going to be a minor in nutrition, health, and wellness. You can see this is uh, slightly less in terms of hours. It's only 18 credit hours, which in general is typically about six courses. Most college courses are three credit hours. Some are, some are less, some are more, but for the most part, they're three credit hour courses. So you're looking at essentially about six courses for this uh, minor. And again, a lot of students who are in our majors are already taking some of this coursework as part of their major. So they're simply tacking on some additional courses to fulfill the requirements of this minor. And this is a combination of our entry level nutrition course, um, our wellness concept, concepts course, and then some additional coursework that students can pick and choose depending on what their area of interest would be. And it just gives them a better or a more well-rounded approach to nutrition, uh, wellness, and health. I'm gonna talk briefly about internships. And this was alluded to earlier, Dr. Hughes mentioned the fact that his healthcare leadership program, which is just a fantastic program, especially with the online nature and the flexibility of that program. But all of our students will actually perform an internship. Now, the students who are in physical education, teacher education, they're doing residency teaching if they're in that teacher track. But the rest of our students will go out on internship. And just this past year, we sent out roughly 350 students in the community. Most of them would be in Memphis, but it's not restricted to Memphis. Sometimes students come to us and say, I, I live in North Carolina. I'd love to be able to go home and complete my internship. And we develop an affiliation agreement with a particular site and the students are allowed to do that. But all students will undergo an internship. It allows them some hands-on on-site training. You can see here, it's generally 240 hours of work experience. And we typically do this over the course of a semester. So a 15 week semester, they may be working, you know, 15 hours a week or something along those lines to fulfill obligations. Some students may spend more time. And a lot of our students, when they complete the internship, it's really a 240 hour interview for the student. And if they do really well and they don't plan to go to graduate school right away, oftentimes those employers, if they're seeking to hire someone, will end up hiring that student in that role. And we have many, many opportunities. You can see just a handful down below here from St. Jude, Campbell Clinic, Church Health Center, Grizzlies. Um, and then another one, you can see the final bullet point is, and Alex is going to chat about this in just a minute in terms of research opportunities, but we have a variety of research laboratories in which we do work from the cell culture level to animal studies that are preclinical to human clinical trials and some fantastic research scientists. And if students are interested in pursuing a career in research, you know, we strongly advise that they actually complete the internship under the direction of one of our faculty in one of our research laboratories. So Alex will probably talk about that in just a minute. 
Oops, Dr. Bloomer. And study abroad. Yes, so this is one of my favorite things that students within our college have an opportunity to experience. And I think as, as we think about preparing future healthcare professionals, one of the things that probably all of us would say is very important is cultural competency. And one of the best ways to become culturally competent is to experience another culture. And because of this, we provide some faculty-led study abroad opportunities for students within our college. Um, typically, they are held in the summer, usually for three to four weeks in length. Um, it's usually a three credit hour course um, that is taken. And this provides students the opportunity to not get behind in their coursework. They're not having to plan for a whole semester abroad somewhere. So it's a relatively short duration of time. But again, they are typically with someone from our college, um, a faculty-led program. So it's tailored to the students within our college. Um, I have personally had the opportunity to lead um, study abroad trips to two different locations. One um, was in the Cape Town, South Africa area. And then most recently, we took a trip to um, Florence, Italy and learned about food and culture and Mediterranean diet aspects. Uh, we were also scheduled to do that again this past summer, but unfortunately, as with everything, um, it was put on hold because of COVID. But uh, we're hoping to get that back up and running starting this summer with another trip to Florence, Italy. Um, I know the ESMS crew has taken students to Hawaii, and although that's not technically abroad, that's still a pretty far trip. So we count that as, as a study abroad experience for our students. Um, and they've also taken a crew to London. I think that was maybe two years ago. Um, but we, we have these opportunities available for any of the students within um, our college. And even if it's, you know, maybe it's a nutrition focused trip, that doesn't mean that you have to be a dietetic student to to take that um, to travel with us. If you're a student within our college, you would be eligible to participate in that program. And then different programs offer different, I don't wanna call them incentives, but um, for example, within the dietetics program, if you participate in a faculty-led nutrition uh, focused study abroad oppor opportunity, then that course would take the place of your senior project that you would complete your final semester. So it's sort of a way of um, taking advantage of the study abroad opportunity, lightening your load the final semester of college. Um, and then just one more thing about study abroad, and that is that the University of Memphis highly values um, allowing our students to have the opportunity to experience different cultures. And because of that, um, they offer a lot of assistance to students to make it a, a financially reasonable thing to do. Um, I have never had a student yet who has applied for a study abroad scholarship that has not received it. That scholarship is usually between a thousand to two thousand dollars for a summer program and the cost of the summer programs are usually in the two to three thousand dollar range so as you can see it, it significantly um, decreases the cost of going on a trip like that and that would include your um, your credit hours as well so it makes it really reasonable um, from a financial standpoint and um, it's also a lot of fun thanks mc and research. Okay, I'm back. Um, so within the College of Health Sciences, we have like an unbelievable number of really research productive faculty, um, some fantastic facilities ranging in everything from uh, basic to applied science. One of the things I'm going to actually link in the chat box here is to the U of M Human Performance Center, which was alluded to earlier. Um, a couple of years ago, we just hired uh, a PhD from the Australian Institute of Sport to lead our sports science efforts. Um, and that is My phone. I'm on computer. To, to provide um, support for Tigers athletics in ways that virtually no other university in the country is receiving uh, from academically oriented faculty. There are some cooperative projects going on in other places. Um, I would say that what we're doing with, with Tigers Athletics at the University of Memphis is second to none. And as such, uh, I genuinely believe we're sort of on the frontier 
in that area. We're doing some really exciting projects. Uh, we just most recently wrapped one up with uh, Memphis Tigers men's basketball, and there's a great write-up on that in, uh, in the Daily Memphian, actually, which you can find online. Uh, we actually had the, the reporter actually come in and go through the screening protocol herself uh, and has a pretty um, sort of an entertaining account of all of that. But um, that includes a lot of support from our biomechanics lab, which looks at, as the name sort of implies, um, sort of a mechanistic approach to quantifying and studying human movement. And we have some faculty in that lab that do work with uh, runners. Some of their work is featured on podcasts as well as recently in the Washington Post. Uh, we have other faculty members who are interested in working with older populations um, in groups of people that have got Parkinson's disease. Um, everything from running to jumping to walking, you name it, uh, we're doing it in there. There are a couple of other labs, um, as Dr. Bloomer alluded to, all the way down to uh, or ranging from, I should say, cell culture and animal studies, all the way up to uh, human subject research, ranging in nature from um, motor learning and, and control, which deals with things, uh, really interesting things like uh, skill acquisition, so how people learn certain skills, um, what sorts of things contribute to developing productive practice plans or training programs. Uh, we also have a really nice uh, down in sort of the basement of our building, we have an exercise testing lab, which was outfitted with uh, tons of really cool equipment. Um, I always tell our students it, it doesn't really matter, um, especially coming out of the exercise sport and movement science department, what your uh, intended career trajectory is. I think there's a fantastic amount of value in learning what sort of techniques people use to measure things in that field, as well as familiarizing yourself, um, not only with the gold standard of research in those areas, but also field tests that can be readily applied in schools, gyms, clinics, um, you name it. Really, uh, we're, we're covering almost every area there. Um, and I think not only does it help you from a clinical perspective or from a practical perspective, being able to actually measure and demonstrate change and demonstrate or or verify that, that what you're doing with these people is working, um, but also when it comes to reading and interpreting the research so that you can stay on the leading edge of people that are practicing in your field, um, all in the effort of having, you know, the best form of evidence-based practice that you can offer to um, athletes, to patients, to clients, it really doesn't matter. Um, we've talked a lot about um, internships to this point, and we do have uh, a number of undergraduate students that complete their internships within several of our labs um, right under faculty direction. One of the things that, that I don't think occurs to everybody is if you intend to go to uh, professional or graduate school, and, and even if you intend to go straight into the workforce, one of the things that can really sort of set you apart is to have some research experience. Uh, I think that gets a lot of people's attention quickly uh, in terms of employers and prospective graduate advisors uh, and faculty members of professional schools. So we have a lot of undergraduate students who actually get involved first uh, as a research participant, potentially volunteering their time to come in and be themselves a human subject. And more often than not, uh, it seems like they kind of uh, catch the bug, if you will, from that experience. And it leads to more curiosity and more interest in how research is conducted. And, and it spurs some inquiry or some curiosity in terms of things that they might uh, sort of aspire to develop a research program for or a study of their own. Um, and those people will go on to deliver things like uh, poster and maybe even podium presentations at some conferences that we attend. Uh, as Dr. Shallard alluded to, there's a lot of funds available uh, to help us get people to conferences and to get people to study abroad. Uh, I wasn't there in London with the ESMS crew, but I was in Hawaii. Uh, and during that time, we actually did, in partnership with uh, the lab director there, conduct a full-blown research project, which has resulted actually in a couple of publications since then. So 
Um, all of that to say we do have really research motivated faculty. We have fantastic facilities. Um, and then I, uh, I linked the U of M Human Performance Center because I think people find that um, especially interesting because it's just, it's unique. Uh, as I mentioned, there's not a lot of other places in the country that are doing things right now. Uh, and our leadership and our college has enabled us to, to put together really a, a first rate program in that regard. And uh, we look forward to seeing it grow from there. Thanks so much, Alex. Great information. All right. So credit by exam. So um, within the College of Health Sciences, we try to make sure to, we try to make things as easy or as flexible for students as we can. And we found that some students um, were knew a lot of information or they were already in the health field working in the field and sometimes they may not need uh, they may not uh, have needed to sit in the classroom and maybe they had the opportunity to actually test out of a course and so we have something called credit by exam at the university of memphis that you can test out of general education courses however we um Maybe we may test for about 15 of our classes within the College of Health Sciences for you to test out of. Um, so for example, a lot of students uh, try, uh, try to test out of nutrition. So if you are a high school student on here and you're in your uh, the health sciences track and you're taking a nutrition course, or if you're a student who um, has a lot of experience in nutrition and you feel as though I, I know a lot about nutrition, I don't necessarily need to sit in the classroom, then you can actually test out of that course. So you will pay a $60 fee. Uh, you will go through an online process. You would have to get approved. You need at least a 2.0 GPA um, in order to take the test. Um, you have to, we, I would give you a study guide and I will also, um, you would have to buy the book. Um, you can also talk with the professor just to see, you know, just to get a rundown of the test and see what exactly you need to study. Um, there's about 100 questions on the test, so it's not an easy test. So don't think that, oh, I can just test out of this course. It's really for students who have knowledge about a certain course or a certain material. Um, and then if you make at least a 70 on the exam, then you don't have to actually take the course. Um, if you make less than a 70, you have one more opportunity to take the um, exam, but then if you, and then then if you pass, you get the credit, you only pay $60. And that's opposed to paying for a three credit hour course, which is about, I think of like $1,000, Dr. Bloomer. I'm, you're good with the numbers, I'm not. <laughs> Um, so you just saved a, a lot of money. Um, so again, if you have a lot of knowledge about something and, and a lot of um, the classes that you can test out of is on our website and I'll give you that link at the end so you can kind of see um, I, oh, I, I know a lot about this uh, class, or I know a, a lot of information about this. Maybe I can test out of this. You can study for it, take the class, and like I said, if you get a 70, um, you can get the credit for the course and save yourself some money and some time. So just a little bit about credit by exam, and hopefully you guys take advantage of that opportunity. A lot of students don't know about it, and like I said, it's not just through the College of Health Sciences. There are a lot of general education courses that you can test out of as well. So if you're a high school freshman coming in, or if you're a freshman or whatever, you can test out of gen ed courses as well. All right, I think that's Dr. Bloomer. Okay, so I'm gonna appeal now to your financial mind, so think, think this through a little bit. Jessica just mentioned about credit by exam, how you know our current rate is about $60 per course. I think there's been some discussion about changing that a little bit, but still the cost savings is tremendous when you consider that a typical three credit hour course is probably gonna be somewhere in that thousand or so dollar range. Not to mention the fact that you study for it, you take the exam and you pass the exam with a 70 or higher percent and you get the three credit hours. So that's a no brainer. If you have prior knowledge, certainly you wanna do that. But we are at the university, as you're probably well aware, our president, President Rudd has made a firm commitment to work with students in the best way possible to try to keep the tuition costs down. And we have not seen a tuition increase or much of a tuition increase really over the past few years, which is really remarkable in higher education. So I wanted just to share this with you just for a minute. And if there's any parents, moms and dads on the call, um, I think you're gonna appreciate this as well. But certainly students you need to really pay attention to cost because we don't want you getting into that situation where you graduate from a four year institution and then you plan to go to graduate school or perhaps not and you're looking at a significant student loan debt. 
you really want to be careful when you make this decision and thoughtful about it. So this just gives you some idea of what we'd be looking at. Our current uh, tuition for one year, you know, two semesters is just under $10,000, about $99.12. And that typically would be for 30 credit hours. Most students would take about 15 hours in the fall, 15 hours in the spring, et cetera. And then what I did here is I just projected out roughly about a 2% increase across that four year period. And we can simply look at the red bottom line total. All the college degrees here, it's 120 credit hours. So four years times 30 credit hours per year, you're looking at roughly $40,000, okay? Now think about this. Remember you have the HOPE scholarship, hopefully. That HOPE scholarship is good for $3,500 for year one and two. $4,500 for year three and four. So that takes care of a good chunk of that amount. In addition to that, hopefully you're going to be securing some additional scholarships which is going to take that $40,000 amount down as well. Now, compare that to if you chose to go to a public school, just like the University of Memphis, but it was out of state. Generally speaking, you're looking at about double that cost. Depending on what you read, you may see $20,000, $25,000 or so on average. So you're looking at probably about $80,000 or in this example, $82,432. Compared to a private institution, you're looking at more than triple the cost of the University of Memphis and our College of Health Sciences. We have a fantastic college. We have excellent professors, instructors, people who care about you, staff that are gonna advise you very well. And we deliver state-of-the-art research programs that you as an undergraduate student have full access to being involved in, as Alex mentioned. We have many of our students involved in research projects and are co-authors on scientific manuscripts before they graduate. That's something that typically is not done at most institutions. So the value proposition here, I think really deserves attention. We provide fantastic value for the overall cost. And if you compare that to what you're getting elsewhere, as Mary Catherine mentioned with her program in, in dietetics, the programs are accredited by the same accrediting body. Now, obviously you have different professors here and there, but I know I've been working at the university now in this general area for 16 years. And I know we have fantastic professors who care about our students. And sometimes you're not gonna find that. You're gonna find individuals who may be more interested in doing the research as opposed to pouring into students in the classroom. So there are a lot of good programs out there. That's the reality. Um, but do you wanna spend double for the same overall degree, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Science in Education, whatever it may be, especially knowing that you're likely going to need to attend graduate school to pursue a career in the healthcare field, at least many of them. Many of our students will eventually go to graduate school. And when you go to graduate school, they're not going to care where you graduated from as an undergraduate. If you were going to law school, you were going to business school for your MBA, some of those companies that are going to be hiring you or firms are probably going to want to know where you graduated from. But the reality is our students, let's say I saw many in the chat saying, I'm interested in going to PT school. Well, exercise science or health science for that matter, they're both great programs that'll prep you to go to PT school with the prerequisites, et cetera, so long as you follow our, our path. Um, when you apply to PT school, they're not gonna be concerned with where you obtained your undergraduate degree so much as do you have solid grades? Are you really passionate about this? And do you have good some experience in that field? So just something to think about when you're considering a four-year institution, are you really interested in paying double or sometimes triple or more for an education that's probably gonna be pretty similar. We provide a fantastic value in the College of Health Sciences. So I'll, I'll leave you with that. And if you have questions about that, I'd be glad to address those. Thank you, Dr. Bloomer. 
Um, so before we end, I just want to make sure that you guys follow us on social media, on all platforms. We are U of M Health Sci. Um, we actually have a, our showcase week going on this week on our um, Instagram and on the Memphis Admissions Instagram. We have student takeovers going on, so you can get some uh, some information from the students' perspective. Um, just a lot of highlights about our staff and just a bunch of things going on in our social media. So please follow follow us so that you can stay um, up to date with everything that's going on with the, within the College of Health Sciences. Our marketing manager does a great job of updating everything and keeping everyone informed about stuff. Um, also, contact us. Um, so my information, again, my name is Jessica Newsom. You'll see my email address. You can email me at any time. I am available to answer any of your questions. I have connections um, all across the university, so I know a lot of people. So if you have questions about anything, please feel free to ask me, and I can connect you to the right person. Um, we have our dean's email, email address. We have our two advisors on here as well. So we are always here to help you. Um, so please don't hesitate to email us. And we have our, our direct um, email address, healthsciences at memphis.edu. You'll see that to the right. Um, that's also a direct email address. If you can't remember any of these other email addresses, just send something to that email address and someone, one of us, will also um, email you back and get you the information that you need. And we have questions. We have some in the chat box, so I'll say them aloud and then you guys can just chime in whoever knows the answer to the question um so let me scroll up um so someone asked i think she meant what is the difference between a physician technician and a physician assistant is it margarita um is that the question that you were asking are you still on the call let me see Margarita, you can unmute yourself and just ask the question. That That's perfectly fine. That might be easiest. I actually don't see her on the call any. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. Yes. Oh, I'm here. here. Okay. <laughs> uh, I was just asking what's the difference between a, oh, this, is it called physical? Maybe, maybe you mean physician assistant? Yeah, physician assistant. Okay. And the, the difference between a physician assistant and... Are you asking a physical therapist? Mm -hmm. Okay, two totally different jobs. A physical therapist, um, first of all, the education for a physical therapist now is a doctorate degree. It's a three-year degree. Um, UT Health Science Center has one uh, right down the street, and uh, there's a few others in the state as well. But a doctor in physical therapy allows you to be a practicing licensed physical therapist once you pass that licensure exam, which means you're doing a lot of orthopedic, oftentimes rehabilitation, et cetera. Whereas a physician's assistant would be you typically, but not always working in a physician's office side by side with doctors doing frankly, a lot of the work that physicians once did, but now oftentimes practices will be hiring physicians assistants and nurse practitioners to do a lot of that work and perhaps have fewer doctors MDs that oversee that larger practice. So very different job as a physical therapist. Um, we can give you some more information on that um, as well. Okay, um, someone asked, uh, what are the requirements, if any, to be considered a health studies major? Things like grades and prerequisite requirements, or where can I find this info? Well, I, I would say that we certainly welcome all students upon entry. And once the students are in the program, we need to make certain that they maintain um, at least a C minus or better in all classes in order to move forward into the next level coursework. So um, that would be required. And I think Mary Catherine has some things she might want to add from a dietetics perspective in terms of being eligible for um, an internship as well as a, uh, a letter of verification. Yeah, but there is no application process uh, besides the general admissions process in order to uh, be a health studies major. You just apply, and if you're accepted, you declare your major as health studies. 
Yes. Um, so someone said, I'm aware that nursing doesn't fall in the health science category, but if I will graduate, graduate with a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, can I pursue a graduate study to become a physician assistant? Uh, likely, yes, but you definitely want to look at the um, prerequisites that are required to enter PA school, because oftentimes, just like with PT school or OT or a number of others, there are certain courses that you need to have completed with grades, good grades, in order to be considered for acceptance into that graduate program. So you would just want to check with um, the physician assistant program of study that you're interested in and just see what those prereqs are and make certain that you can get those prereqs taken care of inside of a nursing program. Thanks, Dr. Bloomer. Um, Nia had a question about if there are any out of state um, waivers or scholarships. Um, yes, we do have general out of state um, waivers and scholarships for students. There are a certain, there's a certain GPA that you need um, um, in a certain ACT if you're a high school student. And also, um, also the honors, if you're in the honors program, they have a scholarship where they actually waive um, you as an out-of-state student. So you would actually be paying in-state tuition instead of out-of-state tuition. I actually put the link to the scholarships in the description box. And I'll also put the, uh, I will also put the out-of-state honors scholarship in the description box for you as well. But we within the College of Health Sciences don't necessarily um, award out-of-state scholarships or anything like that. That comes from the overall University uh, Financial Aid Office. Um, next question, can I graduate in two years if I pursue the pre-med track? Uh, two years would be extremely <laughs> ambitious. Um, I would say that, uh, again, as that chart showed, typically students, we'd be very pleased if all our students graduated in four years. But I will say that, especially with a lot of students coming in to their freshman year, already having college credit from dual enrollment, AP, et cetera, it wouldn't be unlikely for someone to complete a program of study inside of three years if they took 15 to 18 credit hours per semester, they took a few credit hours during the summers between freshman, sophomore year, sophomore, junior year. That's probably possible. Uh, I know I've seen individuals do it. My wife actually did it. Um, but two years, I, I haven't seen that personally. Perhaps someone else on the call has, but that would be uh, very ambitious. Yes, it, it's going to take you a little minute. I will say, so I don't know if I don't know where you are within your schooling, if you're a high school or whatever you are, um, whatever year you are. Um, so the our program is four years. So you take two years of usually gen eds and then two years of the actually actual curriculum. And then you have to go to an actual medical school, which is like, I don't know, eight years maybe. So you have a lot of schooling if you want to do pre-med. But our program is just four years. Um, it says, in the health studies program, are all of these related to physical professions or is there a mental health study division? We, we do not have um, a mental health area that would probably be perhaps over in psychology um, or counseling, but we do not offer that in our college, no. Okay. Um, someone asked, what is the acceptance rate for a dentistry school with a health science degree compared to a biology degree? That may be a question for the actual dental school. Um, we don't have a dental school at the University of Memphis. Uh, most of our students go to UT or they go to another school. But um, as I said, we do have a pre-health advisor. His name is Cody Clinton, and he has uh, relationships and partnerships with a lot of different um, dental schools in the area, in the surrounding areas. So he would kind of know more of the answer. And, and like I said, I put his email address in the uh, description box. So that may be a question for the pre-health advisor. But we don't have one at the U of M. Um, let's see what else. Someone said becoming a nutritionist sounds interesting. It is. It's great. 
Um, someone said, would veterinary, uh, veterinary practices be considered health sciences as well, or would it be agriculture? If someone was planning to go to vet school, um, they certainly, the thing is, and it kind of addresses the other question too, Jessica, that you just asked about dentistry. Yeah. What, you know, student, parents, who, who's on the call at this point, what you really want to do is look at what those prerequisites are for entry into that particular graduate program. And regardless of the undergraduate degree, you just want to make certain that you get those courses taken, whether they're as part of a program of study, like in biology that requires you to have certain courses in bio and chemistry, biochem, et cetera, or you take those as some of your electives, which some students say, well, boy, taking biochemistry as an elective doesn't sound like a lot of fun, but it's cost effective and time effective because what you don't want to do is finish your program of study and take the courses that are necessary for that program and then realize you have another year to complete prerequisites for your graduate program. The programs are going to be interested in what your grades are in the specific prerequisite courses, as well as potentially like a, a graduate record exam, a GRE or something like that, more than they are what was your undergraduate major. So you really want to make sure you find out what those courses are. And then if you could fit those courses into such as a program like health sciences, that would be great. And we have many students that certainly would do that. The same thing would apply for physical therapy. Uh, we don't have, as part of our exercise science program, the requirements for every single prereq for PT school, but our advisors have built a program of study that allows students to get all of those prerequisites taken care of in that four-year period. So you just need to ask some questions up front and, and we can certainly talk with you about that and help you through that. Great. Um, so someone said, I am interested in becoming a nurse. However, I do not meet the requirements to attend the nursing program here at the U of M. I don't want to give up my dream. So how can I use health studies to go into my career later on? Great question. We've addressed that question for who knows, maybe a couple hundred <laughs> students. So we have a good partnership with the Lowenberg College of Nursing and many students fall into this exact category. Mm -hmm. So what oftentimes the students will do is they'll come to us, they'll complete their undergraduate degree and secure a Bachelor of Science in Health Sciences or within that particular concentration, Health Sciences. And then they will apply, they'll do great because they're capable of doing so and they really want to. So they'll do really well, and then they will apply into the accelerated program in nursing, which I think is, is it 16 18 months? 18 months. And they'll apply into the accelerated program in nursing. That way they've shown the College of Nursing that I can do this work. Perhaps when I was a freshman, I wasn't able to do the work, and it, it, I didn't show that I could do the work based on my grades, but now I've demonstrated to you that I can do the work, I built my GPA up and I've already completed an undergraduate degree. So their chances of getting accepted into that accelerator program are going to be higher. It's not guaranteed, but we've, we've worked with the nursing college on this um, exact issue. And that would be the plan that we would suggest if you're really focused on uh, becoming a nurse. Great. Um, someone else asked, is there a fast track into medical school? We already kind of answered that question. Um, how can I uh, apply for the HOPE scholarship? Um, so Margarita, so you would fill out the FAFSA. So the HOPE scholarship, it usually is automatically applied to you if you have at least a 21 on your ACT or a 3.0. Hopefully it has not changed since I've been in school. <laughs> I think that's still correct. But yes, you have to have either or. And once you fill out your FAFSA, which that has that opened on October 1st, so please fill that out as soon as possible because funds do run out. Um, but usually it's automatically awarded to the student if they have a 21 ACT or a 3.0 GPA. And you have to maintain that um, a certain GPA throughout your four years of college um, or you will lose that scholarship. Um, so, but like I sent the link in memphis.edu slash scholarships, it has those requirements on there as well. But definitely if you have more questions, feel free to email me and I can get you in touch with um, my financial aid coordinator, Matt Rhodes. He's very, very accessible and he can help you with that, um, with those questions. 
Um, someone said if as, as an incoming freshman, if you, if you are an undecided health science student, would there be a separate course for you to take or would you have to pick one of the main courses? Ellie, can you, can you uh, say that question aloud? So I, I'm, I don't understand it in the chat. Will there be a separate course for you to take? Um, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I am an undecided um, health science student. Well, I will want to study health science, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure like what direction I want to go into, like if I want to do environmental or if I want to go into nursing or dietary, I don't know yet. So like um, I was saying like, would you, well, would it be like a general health science like course or will you have to like, pick one of like would you have to pick one of the main courses gotcha. like nursing or something i got you um so usually well dr Boom, i don't know if you want to take this or not uh, I would, well i was going to say one thing that i would think of is jessica actually teaches a course called careers in health studies mm -hmm. and in that course she invites professionals uh from this memphis area um spanning a, a wide array of professions, physicians and dietitians and PTs, et cetera, so that you can learn from some of those people about, you know, what does my day-to-day -day job look like, what sort of schooling uh, that I have to go through, uh, things of that nature, which I think Ellie will give you a pretty good idea of some of those professions in the health sciences. So that would be one thing that I would consider. And then the other thing, of course, is, you know, as Jessica, I think, mentioned earlier, mostly when the students come in as, as freshmen, in particular, they're not really digging deep into the coursework in a particular program. Uh, the one that probably starts earliest in terms of what courses need to be taken would be dietetics because they're very particular in terms of, you know, the sciences, this science course needs to be taken before this one, et cetera. But um, you have a little bit of time. You don't need to feel as though, you know, the first few weeks into college, you need to know what you're going to do for the rest of your life. We understand that's not um, happening for most students and we're certainly willing to sit down with you and talk you through some of that stuff but I think Jessica's course would be a great course to take to start out with. Yeah definitely and and like like you said I do have speakers and even a, I actually have a nurse who comes to our class who actually did the accelerated BSM program and so if you are still interested in nursing but you want to go ahead and get your bachelor's in health sciences you would get some information about that too so um Someone said, I have applied for the nursing program and it is still under review. What other careers can I pursue through the health science uh, major? Um, so we, we, we talked about a lot of those um, through each program. So there's an array of uh, careers that you could go into, but I did, I will plug in our um, career map that we have on our website, just so you can have more of a visual of the career opportunities within health studies, because there are so many. Um, and just depending on depending on exactly what you want to go into um, is what, which concentration you would actually choose. And that, that question was for Janet Green. Anybody else want to chime in on that one? I'll interject. Um, and just to let you know that there are a number of things that you can do that I think sometimes students aren't aware of. So if you want to look into the allied health professions, there are things like sonography, radiology, dental hygiene. And if you get your bachelor's um, in health sciences or one of our other concentrations, this allows you to be able to take the prerequisites to go into those schools. So I think sometimes we focus on, oh, I want to go to medical school, I want to be a nurse, when there are a lot of different things in the medical field that you could pursue. All right, yeah. Um, someone said, I heard something about a senior project. Can I get an idea of what we will be doing for that or what it is? I think that was MC. MC, you want to comment on that? I don't see her anymore, but I think she you put it in the post. Off. Yeah, she had to jump off. Okay. Um, yeah, she mentioned yeah, it in the post. I would think of a senior project, it, it depends a little bit on the area, but it's almost like a, a small scale research project. And it could take the form, uh, I guess, a few different forms. One, it literally could be a small scale research project where the student actually collects data 
uh, analyzes data, writes the data up into a scientific report, manuscript, and sometimes actually moves forward with uh, publication of that particular manuscript. And then sometimes as opposed to actually collecting data, it may be more of a think piece. A student you know, digs in the literature and, and studies up on a topic that they find interesting and they try to learn as much as they can and perhaps they write a summary paper on it. Now, when it comes to the study abroad, usually students have an idea of what they want to focus on. They go on the study abroad trip and that essentially fulfills the requirement of the project because they usually do a, a write-up or a report upon returning from that trip. So it can take on different forms, but in general, it's supposed to be uh, somewhat research related. Yeah, I think uh, she answered that to him um, in the chat box as well. So if you want to read that, Akante, um, I think MC answered that for you. Uh, <clears throat> says, okay, this student said, I am a senior in high school and after my year is over, I will have 11 dual enrollment college credits. Congratulations. Do you all take dual enrollment credits or is that something I need to ask the college as a whole? That's a Dr. Bloomer question because he <laughs> is we, over that. Yeah, the university, and I'm assuming if you're a local high school, our dual enrollment coordinator is probably coordinating with your person at your high school so the answer to that question is, is almost certainly yes we accept the dual enrollment credits um, usually those are for general ed but we do actually offer some of our courses um, you know the, the wellness concepts course the nutrition course um, medical terminology we offer some of those as dual enrollment as well and uh, that shouldn't be any issue at all so that's great you almost have a semester of college coursework under your belt. So you're one of those students, Nia, that can probably uh, graduate inside of three years if you really put your mind to it. Awesome. Okay, I think this is our last question from Dorothy. I'm late. She said, I'm leaning towards clinical slash medical lab science. I want to know if there are any programs available that will help me understand more about this field and how can I apply, apply for them? Well, we so despite the fact that we have a lot of the same equipment and a lot of our research does involve a lot of clinical and laboratory based analyses what you're asking that program we do not offer a program in medical medical lab sciences so we don't have that program of study at the university of memphis uh, i'm not certain which programs would oftentimes i see those programs in two-year um, colleges as opposed to four-year institutions. Jessica, do you have any more information on that? Yeah, most of those are um, technical programs. So Southwest uh, Tennessee Community College or Northwest, um, Tennessee, Northwest Mississippi, they have those two programs as well. So like Dr. Blumen said, yeah, th those are both two-year degree um, career opportunities. And I think if you want to look at our medical assistant minor, that would give you a good idea of some of the type of clinical skills you might need in that field. Okay, thank you. Um, Nia also says she's an out-of-state student from Alabama, so does her dual enrollment transfer the same way as in-state? I think, is, is that right? Yeah. I, I would imagine so, Nia, but again, this would be something probably that you'd want to talk to admissions about, but dual enrollment is not uncommon at the university. We're, we're heavily involved in that, and I, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't transfer in, but that's not a decision that, that we make um, within our college. All right, those were all of the questions. Great questions, guys. Thank you so much for um, engaging with us and asking us all of these questions. I hope that we were able to answer everything um, that you asked um, and you got a lot of great information. Um, so again, I'm going to put my email address up here just in case you guys have any more questions or want to shoot me an email. I am always available to help you. Um, I can connect you with any of the faculty members on this call. Um, they are always happy to answer any questions as well. Um, and like I said, please follow us at U of M Health Sci just to see all of the events and things that we have going on within the College of Health Sciences and any other events that we may have as well. And that is all I, I have. If there's nothing else. 
I hope you guys have a great night and thank you for joining us again and stay healthy and stay safe and all that good stuff and finish your semester out strong. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.